Gude. So, new toy. This is the AK Iwi 0005, no, 5000 wireless electronic wind instrument, which is my new toy. Basically, it is for a saxophone or the keyboard is to a piano, meaning it's a digital instrument, as I just told you. It's perfect for playing it in apartments. Have a listen. See, it's really, really silent. Quick overview, what do we have? We have those buttons, those are electronically and not switches. We have two switches here and we have lots of electronic stuff. In way of connectivity, you have instrument, USB, headphone, MIDI, wireless. It runs on battery, you charge them also via USB. So I bought it like five weeks ago and I had the option to return it after four, but I didn't do it, so obviously I'm quite pleased with it. But there are seven things I did to adjust it to my needs. So let's have a look at it. This is the strap, the neck strap that comes with it. I don't want to go into the details of this hook, the latching mechanism here or the ergonomics that go into this leather strap. So if you pick this up, just remember to get yourself a decent neck strap. This is the one I used with the saxophone for years. And it has a proper latch down here and it's easy to adjust and yep, first get yourself a good neck strap. And since it runs on battery, you can take it anywhere you want, but you won't be able to hear it when you practice it. So second thing, get yourself some decent earbuds. So you can just roll them together like this <laughs> and just throw it in your box or wherever you carry it and you will be good to go. One more with the accessories. When you receive it in Europe, you get something like this. As you see, it's USB powered, so it works like a phone charger. And you have the European plug in there, but if you have a look at it, then you are greeted by whatever this is. Basically, you're carrying two chargers in a really bad form factor. So just put it away like this and get yourself a decent, sleek phone charger like this. And you see... Huh? Fourth thing is the manual. Just download it and look at it. It comes with a more or less comprehensive quick start guide, but look at this, the buttons. Buttons here, buttons here, buttons here, and we didn't even look under the skirt. So even more dials and buttons. Just to give you an idea of the intuitivity that went into this. It's really intuitive. Press FX and level at the same time and the battery state will be indicated. Have a look. 91%. Easy, no? How, how do you not know this when you unpack it? Second thing is, this is a digital instrument. It houses 100 instruments within it. You can play whatever you want. But how do you change the instruments? Have a look at the buttons. You don't see anything. But it's really, really intuitive. If you touch this screw, you see huh? what I'm doing? This number lights up and this means you have selected the zeroth instrument. Okay, that alone is not enough. How do you switch between the instruments? That's also really easy. Just use this to go up and this button to go down. And no, there, there is no indication for this. These two examples should show you that it is Maybe a good idea to have a look at the manual and find more hidden quirks and features of this device. So number four, get the manual. What's good about an instrument if you can't show off to people? And where are people? Most likely they are not at your home. What do you have to do? You have to bring yourself and your instruments to your audience to be admired. So you need a bag for it. After research or googling, you will find three options. And if you know more, please let me know. But these are the three options I found. First of all, just order the bag that is provided by them, if you like the design, or if you like the form factor, or if you like the price. Second thing, get a soprano saxophone bag and modify it, like cutting it out, gluing it together, and trying to mold the shape of this device so it 
it fits quite snugly in there. If you're into that, you can do this. And third thing, deeper Google and maybe find another manufacturer that provides a special case for this device. So here we go. Du, 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 du. It's basically just a rectangular shape. And you have your strap here and, and here. And that's basically just a seat belt from a car. I like this. It's reinforced with wood, like plywood or something like this. On the top and on the bottom it's not no plywood on the sides, but you will see it works out fine. And if you open it, you can remove the plywood cover. You have a small bag and a big compartment here. And you can put the USB cable and your neck strap in here. And at the top, I put the wireless receiver and the antenna and some cable stuff in there. It fits nicely in there and is protected. And at the bottom we also have like a secondary small compartment. And this is also another reason why you want to get a smaller form factor for your charger. And we talk about this in a second. Get yourself a decent bag for it. A good instrument deserves a good bag. So that's as far as money could buy you stuff. But one thing I didn't find was a stand for it. There was no way to have a convenient way to just put it down when I was finished playing and pick it up whenever I liked to. So let me show you what I came up with. Meet the EV Stand 5001. Let me show you its features. Basically, this is all my 3D modeling skills combined in one product. It has a six millimeter rod down here, which is connected to this box at an angle of 15 degrees. And this box is hollow, but you can't see it because it's black in there. And we have two arms to support the EV from tipping over. And I put some fabric in there to prevent it from getting scratched. This isn't a good stand at all, right? We need to stand for the stand and there is what this comes into play, which is the lower part of my old saxophone stand. This so happens to be like 60 millimeters in diameter. So I can just put it in there and tighten the screw. And the operation is quite simple. You just take your EV and put it in there. It's quite secure. Obviously, if you go from behind, then it will fall, tip over. But the 15 degrees angle turned out to be a right, quite nice angle to keep it in place. Once you're finished playing, you can just pop it in there and everything is fine. Last thing, basically you're blowing in here, everything passes through here and drips out at the end. You want to catch the spit before it drops anywhere you don't want it to be. So let me again show you what I came up with the Spit Catcher 5002. Impressive, isn't it? I know. This is another rod, as you see. But this time it's 6.3 millimeters in diameter. So this. And it has a little bumper here. It continues for a while and turns into this like double L bottom piece where the upper one has a tiny notch in there. And how do you use it, you ask? Basically, you take a piece of cloth or tissue and you can slide it between those two L-types, as you see, these arms, tiny one on top, and it's held in place reasonably good. And then, if you remember, we have this instrument port down here. And this turns out to be the exact same size to put it in there. And now it catches everything that drops because you're playing in like this kind of angle. It won't scratch anything because it's put into this hole and it's designed to take something like this in there. So it's genius. Righty. That's it. Those are the seven improvements I came up with in the last four weeks. Wait a second. There is another one like a bonus. Let me show you. This is the EV resting in its place. And as you see, I didn't have to unplug the 
earbuds. I found a way to store them on the device without them dangling all over the place. If we go up, we see double-sided tape and a tiny hook mounted to the cap of it. And I think I made a good job in making this smooth so it doesn't damage the bag when I carry it. So that's it for the improvements. Nothing more to do, right? If you have any other improvements you're using with your instrument, uh, please let me know. I'm really curious to hear what you came up with. Um, you can find the links to the 3D models in the description down below. Subscribe if you like. If not, don't. <laughs> um, and thanks for watching.